right. Thanks for joining us. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Greg Buter. I'm one of the applications engineers here at Computer Aided Technology. I've been using SOLIDWORKS here for probably um, yeah, a good bit over 10 years. And I'm pretty excited to show you guys the mold tools, right? I think they're, uh, they're very powerful SOLIDWORKS tools. And uh, maybe you've attended one of our webinars before. I know we've had some recent ones on simulation, software performance, and data management. This webinar is going to be pretty similar style. I'm going to go through a few examples showing how mold tools in SOLIDWORKS, how they can be used to create the core and cavity bodies. And these are going to be based on your already designed plastic part. We only have a short amount of time today, so it's not possible to get into these examples uh, as much as I'd like to. There are some tutorials inside SOLIDWORKS, and of course, Computer Aid Technologies here, we offer some mold tools SOLIDWORKS training class. Um, we offer these virtual, and hopefully we'll get back to show, having those in classroom training as well shortly. And so both those are great options if you'd like to learn more about these mold tools inside SOLIDWORKS. So the general topics we're going to look at today we we'll revolve around taking a completed design, your SOLIDWORKS part, and designing some of the mold tooling required for production of this part. Having proper draft on the part geometries is required if you want to be able to remove it from the tooling. And undercuts also something that can cause problems if not accounted for. And we'll look at some tools in SOLIDWORKS that help us identify this type of geometry. As you know, plastic shrinks as it cools, so scaling a part is required to make sure we get the correct size once everything cools. The main thing we'll be doing here is creating the mold inserts, okay, the core and cavity bodies based on our part geometry. This geometry may require shutoff surfaces for holes or side cores for undercuts and core pins for easier machining and repair. For our first example, we're going to use a simple model of a plastic dustpan. And we'll step through the process of creating the core and cavity bodies here. This file could be a SOLIDWORKS modeled part or could actually be an imported file if we're working with different customers or CAD systems. So these mold tools up here, they're not a specific add-in or module. They're just a toolbar that needs to be enabled. And it's available in all versions of SOLIDWORKS. So you'll see some um, standard surface modeling commands, draft, undercut analysis. And at the right side here, you'll see some of the main tools. Insert mold folders, parting lines, shutoff surfaces, parting surfaces, tooling split, core, and we'll, we'll get into all these, um, yeah, right now. So just like popping ice cubes out of a tray, we need draft on the part to be able to pop it out of the cavity. So this SOLIDWORKS draft analysis tool, okay, it identifies faces that don't meet our defined draft requirements. So we can keep these colors and they'll update as we modify the geometry. So even setting our goal at, at three degrees here, we're just seeing the red and green faces. So we don't have any yellow ones. So we don't have any, any faces that, that require additional draft. And as I hover over these other faces, you can see it's actually calling out and identifying the, the actual draft on those faces. So in preparation for the mold tooling, the first thing we're gonna do is account for that shrinkage. So we're gonna scale this part up and this will be based on your, your material and design, but for this example, we're going to do 3% larger. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is establish the parting line. This will eventually define where the two halves of the tooling are split. And so SOLIDWORKS is going to rerun the draft analysis here, and recognizing where the transition from positive to negative draft occurs, and this is where it's creating this automatic parting line. So this one looks like it's over uh, probably over 25 edges that were selected for us. And that yellow message box at the top, it's telling us some critical info here. It's saying, yeah, your parting line is complete, but there's still work to be done. And it's because it can't separate the halves because of that hole in it. Right? It says there's going to need to be a, a shutoff surface. So going back into that, there are some other methods. Um, but yeah, there's the message. So if I clear this out, remember it automatically selected those from that running the draft analysis, but I could manually select those. And if I actually hit the Y and N key on my keyboard for yes and no, it's just going along these adjacent edges. So a big advantage here is that we can actually um, make sure that you don't miss some of those real small edges. And then we cancel it out of that. So now we're doing the shutoff surface. And in the, me the green message there, it is telling us that it's separable. So that's certainly a good sign. 
And you can see the preview here of the surface that it's generating. And we have control with how it's, um, how it's tangent to the adjacent faces. Now I know the display looks a little odd here because we actually, right now we have overlapping geometry. So the original orange dust pins there, but there's also some new surface bodies that were just created. And these are ultimately gonna be used to, to remove material from the core and cavity bodies soon. And you can see the mold folders that we mentioned earlier. Uh, they're created at the top of the feature tree. They're automatically placed there when we did that shutoff surface. And as we isolate them, you can see how the, the nice folders organize them from cavity to core bodies. And there's the shutoff surface added to that core side. And then there's the solid body that we still have, which of course is that one. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create the parting surface. And it's gonna extend outward from that parting line we created. So we, we define the width of it. You can see it calls out the minimum raised curvature there, which could pose some manufacturing or durability issues. So we do have the ability right here to, to turn on smoothing. It'll certainly help things last longer. So in preparation for the tooling split, we need to sketch the outer perimeter of, of the insert. And to do that, I'm gonna create a new plane and just base it off this top face. and fully defining that. So this is gonna function like an extrude command going in both directions. And it's gonna create the two different halves. And you can see that the parting surface does not actually extend past this rectangular border. So turning on this interlock option, it creates a tapered extension from the parting surface outer edge. And it helps aid in sealing and alignment of the core and cavity bodies too. So once complete, we now have these additional solids, right, you can see in the tree, the solid bodies, we have the core and cavity solids in addition to our original dustpan solid. And that blue curve, that was just um, the parting line is classified as a curve, so your, your color settings for curve cause it to display that way. So now this is still a part file containing three solid bodies. So let's take a closer look at what we have here. So I'll start by giving these more meaningful names. And then we can use a move command, really just to pull these apart and space them apart for easy viewing. Similar, of course, to our exploded view. You can still see the odd display because of the surface bodies. So grabbing the surface bodies and let's hide those. It's gonna make it more clear that we have the core cavity and of course the original dust pan And you can see the little nub extruded, extruded there that um, is responsible for the hole that you can hang this dustpan on the wall. All right, suppressing so those. Now we're back to all together here. What we're actually gonna do is use a save bodies command. And that's gonna create uh, the new part files for the tooling here. And it gives me the option to make a new assembly all at the same interface. And what's great is it keeps the link to this master source file here. So let's say we change some fillet sizes and stuff like that, it will propagate to these tooling parts. 
and the assembly is open automatically when we do that. So switching back here. You can see the names of these parts carry over from what I had named those bodies earlier. Opening this core, you can see it's a feature manager. It is compact because of that link to the source geometry that I mentioned. And it has the external reference symbol, right? The dash greater than arrow looking symbol there. And pulling these apart again. This time we're in an assembly, so I'm doing the exploded view command. And it makes it very clear, the three solids, in this case, three components we have in this assembly. Okay, in this next example, we're going to make a core and cavity. I'm a little bit more advanced part here. So this is the bottom half of a kitchen mixer. It's a more advanced part. We'll run into a few things that we didn't see in the dustpan. So just like the dustpan, we're starting with a draft analysis. I can see a few yellow faces this time around. So remember that indicates that draft needs to be added. So using the draft command, we identify a neutral plane and we're setting a draft at uh, one degree for this. And then we choose his face to apply it to. And these colors will update once we accept the command. So sometimes it requires editing going back in here, but at least it'll be real easy to, to distinguish if we missed some. Looks like we got those. Now you can see the vents. That's not something we're going to worry about in the draft quite yet. So now that we're all set with draft, now we're very concerned about undercut geometry that might need some, some special attention, special consideration. So we can run this undercut analysis tool and it does a quick scan and we can see that these vent holes over here do contain some undercut geometry. And this is gonna require a side core in our tooling design. But just like we did last time, let's account for the shrinkage. So we'll scale this part and we'll just go again with 3%. So that's 3% larger. And then we'll, we'll move over to the parting line tool. Remember, it's going to rerun draft analysis. This part's more complex, but the parting line itself ends up more on the simpler side. And because of all those holes, this example will require multiple shutoff surfaces. So even after running the command, we still see that message is yellow telling us that it's not quite separable. And then you can see that I can adjust on this larger cutout. We can adjust how it's handled, right? Which, which way it goes, basically which faces it's following. Um, these vent holes, I wanna choose these. They weren't automatically shut off and that's just due to them being sort of parallel um, to the direction of pull. But it's easy for me to select these. All I'm doing is right clicking them and just choosing select tangency. So I'm grabbing all those edges. And what's nice is that yellow message at the left, it should update to the point where if we, if we get all the open areas closed or patched, if you wanna think of them that way, there we go. So it is green. So now it's telling us that's what we wanna see. Um, it is now separable. So then we can accept that and go to the next step. Remember, once you do the shutoff surfaces, that does create those surface bodies, right? Those mold folders. So creating the parting surface, this one's easy. We don't need to do an interlock here since that parting line is, is planar. So we just want to make this large enough to extend past the tooling body. Now, when I scaled it, I didn't pay attention to that, but I didn't scale it um, about the origin. So you can see that it shifted over. Um, so that's why I'm putting a center line here to help make sure I make this symmetric on the part, or centered on the part. And then using this sketch for our tooling split, 
just for this example, need to make sure it goes you know past the part. That looks good enough. And that gives us the two halves there. So now we are up to our three solids. I'm hiding my surfaces and using that same move body. Now this one right here, because of those vents, in the real world, that wouldn't be an easy operation right there. So we'd have some trouble right there. And that is something that we're going to address right now. Let's get rid of those to pop it back together. And so what we're going to do is create a side core for that area. So there's a core tool on our mold toolbar. And this function is similar to the split feature that you might have used before on just regular part files. Um, it maintains all the same geometry but it lets us separate portions off into other bodies. So we need to sketch the shape that we want this side core to have. Again, using a center line to help keep it centered. Using the mirror command. And it's only going to do the split out of one of the bodies because it's up to us what we do. But so even though it's overlapping the two bodies, um, because of the way we'll have draft when I do this, we'll still be able to make sure it only is splitting geometry from that cavity piece. Now for the depth, I just need to make sure it goes past sort of the outer wall of that tooling. And again, we're adding draft to help make sure it gets located correctly. So that's too far. So let's pull that back. And if we pull these apart again, and we can see how this newly created side core um, helps us get over the undercut region there. And let's suppress these just to put it back. So using that same core tool, another great use of it, is we can split out core pins, right? Making, sort of breaking it into more pieces for, for easily replaceable geometry, more machinable geometry. Um, just to keep it simple here, what I'm doing is I'm just going to do convert entities on these um, circular edges at the base of these pins. But this is also done uh, for creating maybe ejector portions or lifters, just other aspects of the tooling where you need to keep the same geometry of what you have. You just need to separate into multiple pieces. Don't need draft on this. And just breaking it up by bringing back those move commands. And so at this point, we actually have eight solid bodies. So taking those eight solid bodies and going back to the save bodies, rather than give them useful names, I'm just going to click save. Um, but we get to save the assembly here. And 
here's our new assembly. Let's go ahead and make sure I'll let's explode it so we can see how it go together. Now during the process, these wouldn't really be pulled apart. Right, the core pins would just remain part of that core body. The side core would come out. And in this case, I just exported, I guess we'll use the term, yeah, I just saved out those, um, the tooling components. So the last thing to show today is just a, a quick example of a completed mold base assembly. I know we've been looking at some of the basics. But in this completed mold base assembly, it's going to be created with the same sort of steps we did, right? Just for the mold inserts, and it certainly contains the mold inserts here as well. But um, we can look at some of the configurations and display states I have set up. But core commands were used to create the pins, um, side cores and lifters. It was saved out as assemblies. Then the, the assemblies were actually organized into different sub-assemblies for the moving and fixed tabs. So we can get the motion. And then these components were all placed um, in a supplier provided standard mold base SOLIDWORKS files. So I know 3D Content Central is where I got this one from. Um, but you can find many of component suppliers having their products available for you to download and use in your designs. Okay, so just to recap, we looked at draft and undercut in our designed part. Right, we scaled it to account for shrinkage. And we created those core and cavity bodies, shutoff surfaces and the side cores and core pins. So that's, that's all the time we have today for this. So thanks again for joining me as we looked at these really powerful mold tools. So something I see often is um, these mold tools, you can think of them almost as macros for doing a lot of your surface commands. You know, it's important to realize that because I've run into cases where, where people might say the Mold tools didn't work for my part, and so they, they don't go down that path anymore. But you can create these, these mold commands, and they'll create your surfaces, and, and maybe it gets you 80% of the way there. And then maybe you have to work with them a little bit with your surface commands to get them to do exactly what you want. And what I mean is maybe on the parting surface, you create the parting surface just as I did there. And maybe you have to delete certain faces of it and then use other surfacing tools to sort of repatch that. A good example is maybe you, um, you need it to behave more planar in certain areas, so maybe you use a lofted surface to help kind of patch areas. So really give it a try, and remember um, it's automating a lot of the surface tools, so it can make things move much faster than maybe you've been doing. So hopefully you learned some things and picked up um, some cool tips there as you use these mold tools. Please join us in some upcoming webinars. We have all these listed up on our website too, so you can see the current ones coming. Um, and they're also ni nicely organized and highlighted by their, their topics, whether it's SOLIDWORKS tips or PDM, um, or 3D experience, or of course, printing and 3D scanning. So thank you so much for joining us today. Hope you guys have a great day and great weekend.